Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy. I'm back with another video. This is going to be on animal form and function, anatomy and physiology. Now, when we talk about animals, all animals face the same challenges in life. How to get food or nutrition, how to reproduce, how to fight off infection, how to find shelter, how to survive. Um, when we talk about all these challenges, we often think about anatomy and physiology. They are hand in hand with one another. They are what we call correlated. Sometimes we'll even say that form fits function. An example will be over here at this jackrabbit. The anatomy of the jackrabbit would be the great big ears that it has, the biological form. Its function of these ears, the physiology of the ears, is that it allows the jackrabbit to have an acute sense of hearing. It allows for the rabbit to release excess heat from its body. When it's hot, the blood vessels will actually um, dilate and give more blood flow to the ears so they can release heat from the body. So this is an example of form and function. So be thinking about that throughout the entire section. Now, when we talk about relating form and function, you need to think that size and the shape of the organism has been dictated by millions of years of evolution depending on if you're a long-necked giraffe, depending on what size, shape of beak you may have if you were a bird at the Galapagos Islands, or even the shape if you're an aquatic animal like the seal. You know, body plans oftentimes of animals that are different, that are in the same environment, look very similar. For example, of the aquatic animal. If you think of the way a fish looks, it looks kind of like a torpedo with fins. Um... The seal down here kind of looks like a torpedo. It has a rounded end with a tail on the end. Uh, so most animals that's, that have developed or become accustomed to life in water have this similar shape. Even a penguin that spends only part of its life in the water. Now, all animals have to worry about exchanging materials with the outside. Now, this is going to vary if you're a single-celled organism or if you're a multicellular organism. If you're a single-celled organism, it simply has to diffuse across that single plasma membrane, and that's it. Multicellular organisms have to worry about it across several membranes and throughout the entire bodies. So when we talk about exchange materials, we're really talking about how to maintain a homeostasis, to maintain a balance. Now, if you look at the diagram down here in the bottom, it kind of homeostasis is kind of like in your house. You have a thermostat that has a set point, let's say 70 degrees. And whenever the temperature of the house drops below 70 degrees, that turns the heater on. The heater produces heat. The heat warms the house back up, right? And when the temperature rises to that room set point, then the heater will turn off. And it continues to keep this in that, that slight range that you have inside your house. Your body's no different. Your body wants to maintain a 98.6 degree temperature, and if it goes above it, your body has mechanisms to bring it back down by exchanging information or materials with the environment. And if it goes below it, your body has mechanisms to make it come back up. So think about when we talk about form and function, a lot of times the function is trying to maintain this homeostasis that the animal has. Now, when we look at animals, animals often have a biological hierarchy. Now, we can start a lot before cells, and we can go after organisms. But for our purposes, we're going to focus in on these uh, five categories. So if you think about it, cell is the basic unit of life. A group of cells that do the same function create tissues. A group of tissues that have the same function or purpose create an organ, heart, lungs, liver. A group of organs that have the same function create the organ systems. And then you have all these organ systems to make organisms. So it's kind of like a step up each time. Now, since we were talking about hierarchy, let's look a little bit at the types of tissues in particular. There are four types of tissues. There are epithelial, connective, nervous, and muscle. Now, we need to go into each one a little bit. The first one, epithelial. Epithelial, there's basically two types, simple and stratified. Now, simple is just a single layer. Okay, so simple is just a single layer or one layer. Stratified is many. So if you look over here, simple, this is just one layer of cells, one layer of cells. Stratified is like you have a bunch of layers. So your skin on your body is stratified, right? So you have dead cells on top that fluff off and cells underneath take the place. Now there's also three different shapes of epithelial cells. There is cuboidal, which are shaped like a cube. You can see them over here. Here's a, here's a cuboidal cell. All right, there's columnar or columnar which are shaped like this. 
Now, these are actually pseudo here. I guess these are better examples. Up and down. And then you have squamous. Squamous just means flat. Okay, so squamous means flat. So if we take these two terms and put them together, you can understand when we, when we talk about epithelial tissue. We can have simple squamous, which are a single layer of flat cells, stratified squamous, like your skin, um, simple columnar, which is just one layer of column cells. Um, you can have stratified cuboidal, stacked in on top of each other. And then you have this one here, pseudostratified ciliated columnar, um, that means they have little hairs on the end of them, and they're pseudo because they have a bigger end than, at one end than the other, and they kind of give the impression that they're more than one layer, but they're, they're, really, they're really not. They're really not stratified. They're really only a single layer. All right, so that is epithelial. Now let's look at connective tissue. Connective tissue, there are six different types. There's ligaments and tendons, which are often classified as your fibrous connective and your loose connective tissues. The, the fibrous would be the tendon and the loose would be the, the ligaments. Um, and another side note about ligaments and tendons, I always think about the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon is found in your calf, and it connects your calf muscle to your heel bone. So tendons connect, tendons connect muscle, muscle to bone, and ligaments connect bone to bone. So that would be like going across the kneecap, for example, your ACL. All right. Uh, cartilage is the fibrous material between your bones. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> cartilage is like in your ears or your nose. Um, not really bone, but it gives you support. Uh, bone would be, of course, bone. Blood is connective tissue. Now, that's probably one you didn't know. And adipose tissue or fat is also connective tissue. Another type is called nervous tissue. Now, nervous tissue is made up of neurons. Now, I have a picture of a neuron over here, and a neuron has basically um, three parts. It has a dendrite, an axon, and a cell body. And let me show you these over here. Um, the dendrites are these little projections here, and they're used to receive a signal. And then you have the axon here. The axon actually transmits the signal on, and then this is the cell body here in the middle. So you go dendrites, the cell body, the axon. Now, don't you notice it has these little bundles? These are called myelin sheaths. I think I spelled it correctly. Myelin sheaths, and they actually act as insulation, and they speed up the movement of the impulse down the line. But realize nervous tissue is very important to us. We, we wouldn't be able to coordinate anything muscle movement-wise without it. And that leads us into muscle. There are three types of muscles. There are skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Skeletal muscle is any muscle that's attached to your skeleton, bicep, tricep, quad. Um, cardiac muscle, of course, is your heart. And smooth muscle, usually I think of it in internal organs, like your intestines, your liver, your stomach. Now, there are some characteristics of these. If you look up here on the left, look at skeletal and cardiac compared to smooth. It has these bands there are these two are said to be striated because they have these bands, and you can even see it when you eat chicken. Next time you eat chicken, if you pull it apart, and it strings it's because of the striations of it. Um, smooth muscle doesn't have these striations, so it's not striated. Now the other thing is voluntary and involuntary. Voluntary means you have to think about it in order to move. That's our skeletal muscle. I mean, I can't go up and slap somebody and say, "Oh, I'm sorry, that was an involuntary action." But voluntary would be our skeletal muscle. Cardiac and smooth muscle are involuntary, which is good. We don't have to sit around all day saying beat heart, beat, churn, stomach, churn, which is so it's good. So each one will have the, the little bit different characteristics. For example, skeletal is strided and voluntary. Cardiac is strided and involuntary. And smooth is smooth or non striated And it is also involuntary. So this kind of gives you a little brief under, overview of the four types of tissues. Now, if you get these tissues working together to make organs, eventually make organ systems. And here's a list of all the organ systems that we have in our body. Now, we're going to go over each one, so I'll just briefly mention it, and then we're going to have later videos. Digestive system is dealing with food pro processing or breaking down of food. Circulatory system is dealing with the blood flow inside your body. Respiratory, exchanging gases with the environment. The immune and lymphatic system is defense. Excretory system, of course, is eliminating waste. 
Endocrine system, it coordinates your body by using hormones. Reproductive system is for reproduction, of course. Nervous system for detecting stimuli and sending out uh, information so that we know how to have an appropriate response. Integumentary system is our skin, all right, for protection. Skeletal system is our bone system, it's for support and protection. And then the muscular system is, of course, for movement and locomotion. Anyway, I, get, I hope this gives you a brief overview of form and function and how our body is organized. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day.